In this video, I'm going to share 10 books with you that have undoubtedly changed my life. These books cover the topics of business, marketing, entrepreneurship, and investing. My name is Matt Diggity. I'm the founder of five seven-figure digital businesses. And I can say, without a doubt, I would not have made as much progress on my journey if I had missed out on any one of these books. In this video, I'll summarize each of them one by one in the order that you should read them. And make sure to stick around to the end as I'm going to give you two extra nuggets to sweeten the deal. First, a set of not quite business books, but in my opinion, are essentials. They cover both personal development as well as investing. Second, I'm going to be sharing a simple trick that I use to read books at 2x speed while still retaining 100%. And no, it doesn't involve taking a speed reading course everyone has the ability to do this with zero training. Now, if you like where I'm going with things, let me know by smashing the like button. This lets me know you like to see content like this and you want to see more of it. Thanks. My first book recommendation is End of Jobs by Taylor Pearson. End of Jobs is the number one book that I've gifted to my friends and family that have come to me looking for advice on how to get out of the nine to five rat race. Oh man, I wish I had read this book 15 years ago. In End of Jobs, Taylor looks at data and statistics to show why job security is a complete myth. College degrees are losing their value just because of the sheer volume of how many people have them. Lawyers are graduating and not even becoming lawyers. That's because there's not enough work. And as AI becomes more commonplace, no job is secure. And that even goes for doctors. That said, Taylor argues that there's one skill that will always be needed, the creativity to harness new technologies and combine them into new products and services that people need. In other words, entrepreneurship. If you haven't quite decided to jump ship and become an entrepreneur, this book will help you make that decision and show you how to get started. If you've already taken the leap and have started a business, it reminds you that you're doing the right thing and will help strengthen your resolve in the inevitable bumpy times. My next recommended book is The Magic of Thinking Big by David Joseph Schwartz. I read this book three times and for good reason. This book is all about crafting the proper mindset for success. Magic of Thinking Big was written in 1959, and that's not a bad thing. If a book stands the test of time, that means it was written based on fundamental principles that will apply agelessly. In this book, David suggests that once you start believing in yourself and your capabilities to a certain degree, your brain will spark the creativity required to achieve your goals. This is the foundation of what's known today as positive psychology. And then throughout this book, David will give you a framework of healthy habits that will help cultivate this mindset. Read this book before you start off on your entrepreneurial journey, or read it if you're already established and want to make sure you're really aiming big enough. The next business book I'd recommend is The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. This book probably makes more entrepreneurship top 10 lists than any other. If I could go back in time and give my little entrepreneurial self one book at the beginning, it would have been this one. One of my favorite quotes in this book is, if your business depends on you, you don't own a business, you have a job. And it's the worst job in the world because you're working Looking for a lunatic. This book is all about making systems. You want to think of your business as a franchise. Even if you have no intentions of franchising, if you imagine that you'll need to duplicate your business over and over again a hundred times, then that will force you to take great documentation of how to run your company so anyone could step in and do it, not just you. 80% of small businesses fail, and a big reason for that is they don't focus on systems and rely too much on the business owners themselves. Read the email so you don't fall into the trap of working yourself to death in your own business. I've been there before. You do not want to be in that position. Real quick, here's a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Ahrefs. You may know Ahrefs as an all-in-one SEO tool used by many professionals in the industry, but it's also a great resource for those who are just starting to work on their website and learn about SEO. If you're looking to improve your SEO knowledge or to start learning about SEO, visit Ahrefs Academy. It features courses on blogging, link building, a beginner's SEO course, and more. Also, if you want to improve your website's ranking but don't know where to start, sign up for Ahrefs Webmaster Tools. It's a free tool that will show you what errors prevent your website from ranking higher. Go to ahrefs.com forward slash AWT and start improving your website today. Now back to the video. The next book is The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing by Al Rees and Jack Trout. This is the first in a quick set of my favorite marketing books. It doesn't matter how good your product is. If you can't market it, no one knows it exists. The 22 Laws is a super short read, but it's jam-packed with solid gold nuggets for marketing. There's zero fluff in it. It's just go, go, go on the nugget delivery. Here's one that I got from the book, and I've probably told this story a million times. In marketing, you want your message to seem exclusive. Like I'm just talking to you and no one else. Trust me, no one else is watching this video. It's just you and me. But at the same time, you don't want your message to exclude anybody. Back in the day, there was a marketing battle between Pepsi and Coke. Pepsi started a campaign called the Choice of a New Generation. It appealed to the young, vibrant, music-loving community that prefers Pepsi over Coke. While it seemed to target young people, it actually targeted everyone. Because who didn't want to feel young, energetic, and lively? Then Coke countered with a campaign called The Real Thing. See, Coke came to the market first, and if you prefer classic, authentic things, then you should drink Coke. 
Why did it work? Because everyone wants authenticity. If you can start to design your marketing messages as exclusive but encompassing at the same time, you're onto some next level marketing. And this is just one of the 22 laws in the book. The next book recommendation is Web Copy That Sells by Maria Veloso. I've never highlighted a book as much as this one. When it comes to writing copy and creating a message, I can't imagine a book with more actionable advice than this. Being able to communicate effectively through the written word is what I like to call a meta skill. If you get that down, it will improve so many aspects of your business and your life. Web Copy That Sells has improved the way I write when it comes to my business marketing copy, my email marketing copy, the text we use on our affiliate websites, the pitches we use in our outreach campaigns, speeches I've given at conferences, and even scripts and YouTube videos like the one you're watching now. This book is so actionable that I took five pages of notes. Read it if you have a business that's up and running and you want to level up your copy and communication skills. Skip this book if you're bad crazy. The next book on my list is Principles by Ray Dalio, and we're moving away from marketing and more into the realm of business itself. Billionaire investor Ray Dalio is the founder of Bridgewater Associates, the largest and most successful hedge fund in the world. Principles is a compilation of his algorithm-like rules that can be applied to life and business. I ran a survey in one of my Facebook groups asking people what their favorite business books were, and this one was recommended multiple times. One of Ray's principles is the concept of radical truth. Radical truth in business means that your company embraces its mistakes so it can learn from them and people can communicate clearly without drama because they care more about the overall goal of the business, which is to succeed. Principles like this are baked into the mission of his business, Bridgewater, and considering their success, I'd say it's worth considering for your own business. Read this book once you have a hire or two under your belt and you're starting to see the need for a culture in your business. I used to think that quote unquote business culture was a foo-foo inefficient topic. That is until I read this book. The only downside to this book is that it's the size of a dictionary. 592 pages and it's a dense read as well. When you get this book, I highly recommend using the reading strategy I'm going to show you at the end of this video. The next book is Who? The A Method for Hiring by Jeff Smart and boy oh boy was this one a doozy. This book is all about giving you a process for hiring what's known as A players. An A player is an employee who has at least 90% chance of achieving a set of outcomes that only the top 10% of others could achieve. They're badasses. These are the people that will take your business to the next level. Remember the systems that were stressed to be so important in the E-Myth. These are the people that will not only carry out those systems, but they can create those systems in the first place. The problem I have with hiring is that I have a low emotional intelligence or EQ. I'm an emotional dummy. When I meet someone in an interview, I automatically assume that all these amazing stories stories and qualities the person across from me is telling me about are true. And I've ended up hiring more than a dozen characters that should have been kept miles away from my business. But this book gives you a framework, a literal step-by-step -step process for hiring that you can follow to the T. They'll tell you the exact questions to ask at the right time that will get the whole truth out of your candidates and separate the B and C players from the A players. Read this book before your next hire. Seriously, I mean it. Once you make a decision in your business to hire only A players, trust me when I say this, your life and your business are going to get a lot better. The next book I got for you is Never Split the Difference by Chris Foss. This book is all about negotiating. Chris is a former FBI international kidnapping negotiator, so you can say he's pretty damn good at it. Chris's negotiation style is all about creating rapport with the person on the other side, gaining their trust, and crafting a win-win scenario using psychology and reality reframing. You can also learn how to haggle on prices, something I absolutely hated to do before I read this book. Now I look forward to negotiating. It's actually fun. If you're at the stage in business where you're making deals, whether that be through partnerships and JVs, or even getting special discounts from vendors, definitely check out this book. Now the next books aren't necessarily business books, but they're definitely gems. And they'll likely help your business as a side effect of reading and applying them. First, we have The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. There's no way to sugarcoat this. This book really helped me out of a dark place in my life. When I was only 20 years old, my mother died of cancer. When I was 22, my father died. I was so intensely depressed, I couldn't get unsad no matter how hard I tried. At one point, a therapist had told me to read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. This book was the first nonfiction book that I'd ever read outside of a school. And I loved it. This was the first time I'd ever learned that you actually have control over how you think and feel. And it teaches you a set of seven habits that affected people use to find success in their personal lives. This book set me down a path of personal development that I still carry forward today. If you're into this stuff, you know, stuff like becoming a better human, then check out this book. Next, I have a two for for you. To cover the topic of investing, I have two great books to choose from. Money Master of the Game by Tony Robbins, or I Will Teach You to Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. Both of these books cover all the foundational theories behind investing. They'll get into the essentials like how compound interest works, why low-fee index funds outperform expensive fund managers, and how investing is not about what you earn, it's about what you keep. They do have some small differences, so depending on your preferences, you could choose one or the other. Money Master of the Game is super thorough, and it will get into some really advanced investment vehicles like private placement life insurance that typically only the ultra-rich use. It's also by Tony Frickin' Robbins, who's well known for pumping people the fuck up, so if you want to get inspired to take action about investing, then this would be your choice. The downside to the book is that it's just not as new as I will teach you 
you to be rich. I will teach you to be rich. By the way, the name is ridiculous, I know. Anyways, the book is new, modern, and up-to-date. So we'll get into current apps that you can use for personal finance tracking and new inventions in the investment space, such as robo-investing. Ramit has also been on podcasts like The Tim Ferriss Show and is probably more relatable to younger people, which is why I usually gift this book to my younger friends and family over Money Master the Game. Okay, so let's talk about how I read 20 books a year at 2x speed while having full retention. What you want to do is get the Kindle app on your phone, but preferably a tablet device. Then, the next time you're about to buy the Kindle version of a book, look out for this checkbox here that says Add Audible Narration to Your Purchase. This upsell will get you both the text and audio version for cheaper than it would if you would have bought them separately. Now load up the book on your Kindle app. You'll see a play button here at the bottom that will kick off the narration, and the app will actually start highlighting the current sentence that it's reading. Thus, you get the benefit of an audiobook being read at 2x, but because you're reading at the same time, you get the full retention of an actual read. I'd even argue that you retain it better because the media is coming from two different places. If you like this video, make sure to smash the like button, and make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this.